Just checking to make sure I'm up and going here. How's everybody doing out there? I guess I'm up. It says nobody's watching yet, but we'll see here. Morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. Okay, sounds good. 50 watching so far. Just want to give time for the trolls to show up and everything else, you know. 11 o'clock in the morning, a.m. Eastern Standard Time might be a little bit early for some of the trolls. So, you know, I have to, I'll have to give them some time. So. Oh, they don't like sunlight, yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> okay, um, gonna be watching the video today and uh, going through it. It's we've gotten some really wild attacks over the years, and these people actually do us a favor because it's just so wild. I mean, there are guys that come out with things and they go through the scriptures and whatever, but some of the stuff this one's a classic, and I just thought, okay, I want to play this. Uh, so, um, we'll go ahead and get started here on this thing. Do this one here. Share screen. I'll do that one. Okay. Here's my video. That I did. Hopefully, this is can be seen. All right, just I'm gonna play a little bit, um, and just let me know if you can hear the audio. Okay, see if you can hear the audio here. Okay, can anybody hear that audio that I was playing? Okay, I can't hear it. Okay, I guess I have to. All right, I'll try it without my headphones on. See if that works. Okay, let's let's try it. Try it one more time here. If you're doing this and you're not repenting, repenting, and there's been chastening in your life, then you're probably not saved. You ever heard me say stuff like that? Oh, Denlinger is all about works. He's backloading works salvation. He's a lordship salvationist. He's a. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, this isn't the video I'm refuting. Okay. I don't, I don't really refute myself. So. Uh, we'll get rid of that one there. Just wanted to make sure I do get the audio correct. Um, so, good. I always forget myself with these live stream things. If you should have the headphones on or take them off or whatever if you're playing a video. So, all right. I'm going to just say this. Uh, here is a thing. Um, Brother Matthew Landau sent this to me. I wasn't sure about the abortion statistics, and I said, I think it's, I heard 50 million years ago, no idea what it's up to right now. Um, he sent me this, and this is just, just mind-boggling. Um, let me zoom in on this a little bit here. Yeah. Okay, total number of abortions in the U.S. from 1973 to 2018, 61.8 million. So, two years after that, it would be you know, however many million, 186 abortions per 1,000 live births, according to the Center for Disease Control. 
U.S. abortions in 2017, 862,320. Uh, abortions per day, 2,362. Per hour, 98 abortions per hour. Uh, one abortion every 96 seconds. 13.5 abortions, 1,000 women aged 15 per 1,000 women aged 15 to 44 in 2017. But here's where it gets really interesting. These statistics include only surgical and medical abortions because many contraceptive measures are abortifactants. All right. Um, well, in other words, uh, abortifactants are, they actually cause an abortion. It, when the, you know, things happen there after intimacy, um, it, the, the birth control pill is actually designed to kill the baby before it even um, starts to become you know, a child before it's even formed. So when you're taking birth control, you're effectively abortion, creating abortion after abortion after abortion. That's a problem. Um, drugs that induce or cause abortions. It is important to not, not to overlook the number of children killed by chemical abortions. Since 1965, an average of 11 million women have used abortifactant um, uh, methods of birth control in the United States at any given time using formulas based on the way the birth control control pill works and they are very toxic by the way we could do a whole video on the toxicity of those things very bad for a woman's health pharmacy experts project that about 14 million chemical abortions occur in the United States each year providing a projected total of well in excess of 610 million chemical abortions between 1965 and 2009 so uh, yeah pretty bad um, so just to uh, bring that statistic in there, um, you're looking at 610 million here, um, 61, 8 point million up there. It's probably pushing 700 million abortions that have happened in this country, 700 million uh, little babies that have been slaughtered. God's not going to put up with that much longer. So um, it's disgusting. You know, when you first get saved, you know, you, you think about the thing of hell and people burning forever and you just kind of think, wow, that seems kind of extreme. But then when you actually start to study what people are doing and the evil of this world and, and what the Catholics are doing to little children and abortion and, and the you know, what they call human trafficking, all this different stuff and child molestation. And, and then you start to realize, no, God is actually very just in sending people to burn forever. These people that are wicked, um, sickening. So, on to the video here. Uh, this uh, Brian Denlinger, the money grubber. Okay, uh, October thirtieth, two thousand twenty. So this is just a few days ago. The Shepherd's Ambassador. All right, the guy sounds like he's a little drunk or something in the video, but I guess I shouldn't judge that, you know, because being drunk, I guess, is fine. Uh, it's a good you know, testimony of being a good Christian or something. But uh, just to show you the kind of, of pathetic things people have to say about me and the lies that come out. And as an encouragement to you, to younger brethren, again, that's why another reason I'm going to do this video is to incur, encourage younger brethren. When you get people lying about you and you think, wow, I can't believe they just said that. That's not even true. Um, you'll see. Watch this. 49 views, so I'm going to be number 50, I guess, here. So congratulations to this guy. Uh, yeah, this will be, you'll see. Hey, guys. Brian Denlinger, the money grubber. Now, this is a GoFundMe account. This is not the only uh, time that you raise money. I... Uh, it probably was up to forty thousand dollars, I, I think, but it's down to thirty-two. Okay, um, proof. It was up to forty thousand, but it's down to thirty-two. Okay, uh, that's lie number one. Uh, it was never up to forty thousand. Okay, it stopped right there. I'll show you the proof here in just a couple minutes, and I'll, I'm going to do this again. And hey, these people, this circle of these these uh, you know bitter former viewers of mine um issue some apologies here because you've openly this guy here this drunken guy is, is openly lying about me so 
continue. And you see in the picture, one of the things he bought was that uh, Hamlet. That's one of the things he bought to carry his books and stuff. I bought the ambulance behind him to carry his books and stuff. Um, no, I I bought a ambulance because it was it was the cheapest way. My wife still had things out at her parents' place in Iowa, and we had to go out and get them. So to rent a U-Haul would have been fairly expensive, and it, how would we have driven out or flown out or whatever else? And so we decided instead of a mobile home, we would get an old ambulance and fix it up, which we did. And uh, we bought that a few years ago. Okay, I think it was uh, 2018, early 2018. Um, I think it was maybe late 2017, early 2018 in that area there. Uh, paid a couple thousand dollars for it. It was not very expensive. Okay, uh, it's a 1999 older ambulance. All right. Drove it across the country, did 4,000 mile trip, came back, saved money on motels, expenses, you know, things like that. Uh, it's been used as a work vehicle. I, I might have mentioned that I'm going to be using it to haul books from our property to the new office here, which I did because the thing can handle a lot of weight. Um, but, you know, again, they bought it to haul his books around and stuff haul my books around why would i haul books around on the road <laughs> okay so let's, let's continue uh, here, like two properties or at least more than two a whole bunch of anchors okay two properties at least more than two um yeah because uh over the course of six years people you know tend to move once in a while you know um, I mean, we came here in 2013 to buy property and bought property, and that was actually seven years ago. Um, and things change in seven years, okay? And when we buy properties, they're very cheap. Our entire net worth is less than $100,000, uh, okay? We don't have much money. I mean, you compare me to any other 45-year-old preacher out there, you're going to see that we live at a poverty level compared to what most people do. Uh, why? Well, because I want to show people you don't have to get into all kinds of debt. You can live debt free. Here's how to save money. But for me to preach those things, I have to do them myself first. I can't be a hypocrite with those things. That's why we live this way. So, yeah. Probably 60 at least. Some people say 168, somewhere around that neighborhood, 168 to whatever. And uh, okay, uh, talking about the the land that we own, I don't own 168 acres. Okay, I don't know where you're getting your information from, or somewhere around that, or maybe more than that, or you know, real exacting, real precise here, this guy. Um, and the amount of land and where I live and what food I eat and whatever, that's not anybody's business. Okay, I put out video, right? Unlike a lot of the guys out there who came before me, I don't just make video after video after you know DVDs and just sell them all, and you, and then you know go after people with copyright stuff if you try to copy them. I've spent years bringing out preaching for free. If you don't like it, don't watch. <laughs> I've always said that it's easy, you know. I don't like this guy. I can't stand him. Go away, you know. Don't watch. You go to the store, you buy something that you don't like. You don't keep going back to the store, buying the same product and complaining to the store for selling the product. That's insanity. Well, I guess when you're partly drunk, I guess when you're making the video, well, anything makes sense. Um, but, you know, because see, new people come along and they might hear some of these things and they'll say, I don't hear Brian talking about this. Well, you know, you have to go back through the years. Um, you know, I've been on YouTube since 2008. Uh, some of my older videos I deleted because it started out as a logging channel, if you didn't know that, um, just to bring new viewers up to speed with this. Then the Lord convicted me. I started putting out preaching and teaching videos in 2009, then into 2010. I got more active in it and things. Got married in 2012 and um, met my wife late 2011. And then we've 
been going from there. So there's a lot of things. So, you know, these guys, what this, what this weirdo guy does, he takes uh, events from years ago, many years ago. And he says, he makes it look like I'm doing it all right now just to prove how corrupt I am. Um, I mean, how many people live at the same property for seven years uh, just or their whole life? Well, some people do. And OK, fine. That's a great situation. But in seven years, don't tell me a lot of people don't move multiple times. That's all that's going on here. But we'll continue. He has to like ride a four wheeler on to scout his properties. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ride a four-wheeler around to scout all my vast lands, apparently. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, again, just to explain things. I, you know, I don't have to tell all this stuff, but I, I just, I like to, you know, I, I'm honest. I tell people about things. Um, when we lived at Bridgewater, the house that you're seeing behind me there in that little thing there, um, when we lived there, I had a property in the town of Littleton, Maine. Okay. It was going to be an off-grid property. It's the first property that we bought when we came to Maine. All right. I paid $18,000 for the property, $16,000 for the house. Pretty cheap. I don't think you're going to get many preachers that buy those kind of cheap, you know, lands. I didn't want to live in town. I didn't want to raise, you know, I didn't have a son at the time, but I didn't want to live in town. Okay. Well, we, Oliver's in the womb, but we didn't really know it because it was early on in her time of being with child, but. And so we bought this land. We're going to build on it, it but there was a right of way going back to it. it. Turned out our neighbor was a drunken Roman Catholic. It was his responsibility to keep the right of way open, and he always blocked it. So I always was being blocked from getting back into my land. It was a half mile off of the main road back to where my property started. The only way I get back in there because there was a, a, a river, you know, and you'll see it in the older videos. It's the, the lake looking river thing behind me in some of my older videos that I did back in the 2015, 2016, up and through there. And the only way to get back in there was a bridge. It was a, just, it wasn't even really a good bridge. It was just culverts with dirt over top of it. And, um, and the beavers were always, you know, clogging these culverts and they'd blow out part of the, the dirt area. And then, and then you couldn't drive back through and it was just a nightmare. So finally I just said, forget it. I'm just going to get, uh, a four-wheeler and um so i had a four-wheeler and i still have it but we bought a used one an older one it was a 2006 kawasaki brute force just being honest here bought the four-wheeler and we could get actually from our house in bridgewater that you see in the video there down to our property in littleton so i would ride on the atv trails and we could go back and forth which saved us money and you know, a lot of things there too. And then I was going back in, driving supplies back in to our property so I could start to build. And I built uh, uh, three different structures back there in the, over the couple of years that we had it. And I was building a fourth, which would have been our home. And it would have been a 24 foot by 24 foot cabin near a spring that we had back at the property there. And um, at that time, our neighbor died and he put the place up for auction and went right before he died. He put a trailer on our right of way and really messed it up. I had to go see a lawyer about the whole thing. It was a, it was a terrible situation to go through. I mean, my son, he took his first some of his first steps back there on that property. There was a lot of things that we really loved about that place. But it was just going to be clear, you know, when this when the transaction happens, that new people come in and buy this property, we there's going to be things that's going to be almost grandfathered in that you know this new trailer on our right of way, and if it's a bad person that buys it, there they there's not going to be anything legally that I can do about it, and I can't take people to court because the guy that did it went he is dead. It was just a, it was terrible, so we ended up selling the property, bought another piece of land with the money that we made. Um, I made a profit on the property, obviously, because I built, you know, three and a half buildings on it, um, tore down the one. So technically, technically it was two and a half, but, um, so I built buildings on it, you know, and of course properties appreciate in value over time. 
So I made some money on it. Um, and we took that money and bought another property. Okay. And you'll hear some things later on, but just, just to, to tell the story, I don't mind telling the story. I'm very honest about things. I'm not trying to hide uh, all kinds of secret stuff that we're doing. Um, but see, these people aren't honest. They'll, they'll just lie about me and, and whatever else. So, and you know, and we do have privacy. Okay. So th there is that. I'm not going to just say, hey, where we live, just, you know, here and just tell everything about it. There's sick people out there. So that's not the only thing you bought, you know. You know, you raised it up for um, his new ministry headquarters. Well, here's one of his ministry headquarters. Over there, it's finally arrived that we're going to make an announcement about the new ministry office and new ministry address. It, it, it was a trailer. It was a trailer that he bought. Store right here is the top secret new ministry office. So we're going to off my mind to finally have all of our books back on the. So to get back to deeper research now. Okay. This guy gives me a headache. Um, Buddy, whoever, whatever your name is here, um, put the bottle down, first of all, and the fast food probably is more than likely. Um, and and you, you're having some attention span problems. You're just clicking through a video. And what does this prove other than the fact that you have some problems? But, you know, please get saved. Get born again. The Holy Spirit can straighten it out. Process of sanctification. You can actually have a real life. You know, um, again. I still have this trailer. Okay, what is this trailer? I mean, I'll show you here in just a minute. And, uh, we finally have is the exciting part. Okay, now you say, oh, look, how exclusive, how luxurious. It's almost like what Kenneth Copeland would have, you know, or something. Uh, you know what it is? Okay, it's a 53-foot uh, reefer trailer, old reefer trailer that I bought from a potato farmer in the area. He gave me a good deal on it because I didn't need the refrigerator unit that goes in the front there where those windows are. This area right in here, you can see I put in some old windows from a shed. Not even, you know, double, triple pane windows, whatever else, um, just single pane shed windows I stuck in the front of this where the reefer unit would have been the refrigerator unit would have been um, there's dents in the walls right there the walls are wavy because it had a leak in the roof and when I bought it it still had a leaky roof and I had to climb up on top of the thing and, and fix the roof on it which I'm sure all my enemies they do that kind of thing too you know they're hard workers I don't know how to work but they do okay I mean, we're, we're, we try to do things as as cheaply as we can so we can advise other people you know and it's I just I see this stuff and I think you people don't even know me. I mean, my goodness. But you know, this is the best that they can come up with. It's really kind of sad. But yeah, it's what it is. It's a it's used to haul potatoes. And I put a plywood floor down and I I put uh, linoleum, I laid linoleum, which I got used scraps and things from a from a Martin's store here in northern Maine. Uh you know. I guess no expense was spared. You know, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, other guys out there, you know, big false preachers, apparently like I'm a false preacher that they, they uh, put offices and reefer trailers too. You know, yeah. <laughs> Continue. Here we have, walk back into that corner there, sending my wife to the corner. She was bad. Here you are looking at, we're actually edited it. That's what it is. Uh, we actually, that's what we're going to have to The guy can't even stand to watch, let the video play or whatever, where I would have explained things and, you know. It's actually not even. I actually got many years ago at Keyword. <laughs> the way to find us. Oh. 
Oh, I didn't know about this. So, solar power, bottom solar power, canoes, solar system. Again, it's solar power, canoes. Um, no, if you actually watched it, I said that they are kayaks. Bought from Kmart. All right. I mean, please get your research, get your facts straight. They were $150 a piece, and I bought them six years ago. We first came to Maine. One of our trips, we came up, and we were staying. We didn't have any place to stay, so we stayed. The realtor at the time said, hey, go stay at a, at a, there's a lodge down near the Drew's Lake. And, um, and he said, go on down there. I know the guy well. I'll call him up and say, hey, you know, are your cabins, do you have some cabins available? And the guy said, yeah, sure. And so we went down, we stayed at this lake. It was really neat. And I said, hey, you know what? We're here for a few days. Why don't we just, we we're at Kmart and we said, let's just get these kayaks and go out kayaking. My, knife, my, my wife had never been kayaking before, but I guess I'm sinful for doing that. Spending $300 so my wife and I could have a, a neat evening. And we've taken them things out many times. We were out, I did a sermon this year in one of those kayaks. But I guess that's, that's wrong and sinful and I'm just blowing money around and, and whatever else, you know. Yeah, can't even get it straight. And that solar power there I'm still using, by the way. And I should add this, because this guy here doesn't know this, and of course he wouldn't. Um, that system that I had set up in that old reefer trailer, it didn't work. Because as the sun went down, when I originally built it where the solar panels were at, as the you know it got sunlight all throughout the day, but then as it goes to winter, the sun kind of goes down further, and then the front of the reefer trailer block the solar panels so i had to redo my solar system to get more power and then my computer wasn't working anymore to do video editing so that's what happened there the, the i still use the the trailer for holding books and things um but and ironically the, the kayaks are actually inside the reefer trailer now because we were getting mice living in the kayaks and that's not much fun when you go to take out your kayaks and mice come running out um, don't really want to take mice out on the lake, you know, but, uh, so, you know, people see, just ask me questions. People could ask me questions. I've given the offer and I'll give her, give it again to any of my enemies out there. Um, if you, you know, have some kind of an issue with me, write me a letter, just write me a letter and say, could you please address this? I believe you're wrong in this area or whatever else. But I guess it's, a, it's better to have a troll channel where you just continually, waste all your time, you know, watching my videos, and just sitting there, you know, getting drunk or eating fast food or whatever else. And, you know, I rip on the thing of eating fast food because I used to be a fast food junkie myself and it led to very poor health. And now I'm out of that phase of my life and I know the good health and I'm trying to wake people up because I care about people. So let's continue. <laughs> Um, what else? Ministry headquarters. I else? Let's see. We can find it. We 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 have a joke, ongoing joke with our son Oliver. We'll we'll talk about you know, um, uh, cell phone zombies because you see these people walking down the street and they're just going, <laughs> they're walking, not even looking where they're going. There's a, uh, 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 you know, uh, there's one in action here. Just you know. Go down through all the videos against Brian Denlinger and, and of course, Brian's videos as well. You know, ugh. sad, really sad. Wonder if this is the same exact thing, just unfinished. I don't know, but this is a somewhere that you. Ministry headquarters. No, well, that's actually our tiny house. Which I'm sure that you and all my enemies out there would live in a tiny house, you know, to save money and things, of course. Sure. I don't know. It's one of the like finished ones that you had. I don't know if it was the trailer or not, but one of 
and of course uh, he has and he starts with that Oh, there's the. Right. I'm glad that I found this. Last of my three studies here. This is his bus that he was tr out there, yeah. trying to convert so into a ministry headquarters. <laughs> this is his bus that he was trying to convert into his ministry headquarters. Can you prove that again? Where did I ever say it's a ministry headquarters? It's not a ministry headquarters. Um, again, in an effort to try and save money, to try and teach people how to live debt free, how to live cheap. If you're drowning in debt, here's how you can get away from that whole system. Here's how you can live a, a cheap life. We bought a old school bus. Okay. And I'll even shock you. We bought two old school buses. When we first bought our property in 2017, I bought a school bus that was not running from a garage, Wester Dolls in Littleton, Maine, to be very specific, not far from where our first property was that we bought when we first came to Maine. And I bought a, an old school bus retired from the local school district here for two thousand dollars. OK, the guy used the guy that owned the garage had to use his wrecker, a big tow truck looking thing. And he pulled the, the school bus the whole way down to our property, backed it in to our onto our land and then we use it for storage okay that's I, I know it's extravagant you know i'm sure kenneth copeland has school buses on his property you know and benny Hinn and all the other big charismatic uh you know prosperity gospel guys i'm sure they have school buses littering their properties because you know that's what we we uh prosperity preachers do to show our wealth you know old school buses and so then this one, I went back to the same garage. He had another one. And I said, I was thinking about this idea, which I'll tell you here in a minute, which is in, I think it was in the off grid channel that I had for a little bit of time. But um, I went back and he had this one. It ran and I actually drove it down myself from Littleton down to where our land is. And about an hour, 15 minutes drive, driving this old school bus. Oliver sitting in the thing and uh, he was having the time of his life, you know, but anyways, we drove it down in the winter and uh, ended up, you know, I backed it into place and whatever else uh, went in, took out all the seats. I did it on both buses. It was a terrible job because they rust so bad up here because of the stuff they put on the roads. The bolts don't come off the seats. So you got to grind the heads of the bolts off. And, oh, man. But <laughs> It's a lot of work, in other words. Gutted the whole bus out, um, you know, took apart the wiring, drained the tank, did all kinds of work on the bus. And then I built shelving, you can see right behind me there, and that little metal thing just in the corner. Um, I don't know if it was mounted there or not, but it's a, gr it's a grain slash nut mill. You can make your own peanut butter with by hand. We make our own peanut butter. Um, we do a lot of things for ourselves. Uh, that's why I'm very busy and I a lot of times don't have time to get back to people right away because we have a lot going, but we've created it as a summer kitchen. It has a wood cook stove in it. We cook throughout the summer months in our old school bus. It's not a ministry office. Okay. Not what it's for. So, but these guys on YouTube, man, they know everything. They, know, they just know it all about me. It's incredible. Like I said, I mean, this stuff's entertainment for me. It's just, it's great. I was showing my wife some of this, and she's just cracking up, and she just said, what a weird hell. You know? So I bought a bus, ambulance, um, Two trailer. Buses. They converted. And that, there's his bus. So said, oh, it's just old bus. No, it's where he was trying to find a new headquarters. Well, there's the bus. Glad I found that one. Yeah. Um, All right, I'm going to talk to you about 
and he preaches about not having a church building, but has a ministry office. If you have a church building, it's satanic and wicked. You're lost. You're a Jesuit. You know? uh, when did I say that? When did I say that? Just lied again. These guys seem to have a thing for lying. They're the ones that are genuinely saved. I'm lost, but they just lie. You know, you're a Jesuit if you have a church building. You're satanic. You're lost. Uh, when did I ever say that? I've never said that ever. If you're defending church buildings after going there, you know, if I would condemn people that had church buildings, I'd be condemning myself. I used to be a fanatic for church buildings when I was saved early on before the Lord really showed me the truth. I've never said that people that have ever gone to a church building are lost or Jesuits or, you know, whatever. I never said that. People that defend them after knowing the truth and hearing the truth and refusing to repent. Um, yeah, I have to question their salvation. I say, I don't understand why they are defending this after they know the truth. After they know the truth. Okay. You know, maybe you can play that back if you're one of these devils that stalks this ministry and play it and, you know, Real slow so you can get it, you know. Everything else. Anyways, that might be the same place. Yeah, that's the same place. Never mind. Um, let's see. Of being happy with that trailer they converted and all finished up. You know, that trailer, I think he, uh, if I remember correctly, he finished that all up and everything and finally got it done. That's what you see in the last one. Now he has a house, too. Another house. The donations made, you bought him a house. Another house that you did not need oh. to make a whole house to make into a uh, whole house to make into a thing is oh man oh my goodness buddy get some help okay you got some major issues um it's an international ministry where do we run an international ministry from you know crazy I mean you know Okay, it's this is not a church building. Well, thankfully. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, how do I run an international ministry? We contact people. We have people, you know, like I've shown, just, you know, right here. I mean, this right here, these are letters we've gotten in the last month and more all the time. You know, hopefully you can see that. Looking over here on my screen here. Um, you know. We are in contact with thousands of people, but I'm just supposed to not have anything, I guess, you know, if I was really a legitimate, um, you know, minister, I guess I'd have to live in a hole in the ground or, you know, if I had a mortgage house and a mortgage church building, then I'd be real, I guess. Uh, let's continue. Headquarters. I wish I had a house of my own. Well, maybe you would if you weren't such a loser on YouTube, just, you know, stalking a guy like myself. Maybe if you actually became a man and got out of the house occasionally, you know, not went for beer and, and fast food, maybe you ought to just get out and, you know, try to do something with your life. Maybe you should give it to me. Oh, yeah, look, maybe if you give it to me. Well, uh, why would I want a drunk in my house? No, I don't think so. Work, you know, work. Because I'm poor. I really am. Yeah, <laughs> really am. Um, see. Um. Uh, here's your, here's a classic one too. Watch this. What else did you buy them? A new Jeep. A new Jeep. Oh my goodness, a new Jeep. Um, 
we bought a 19 year old Jeep Cherokee. They don't even make them anymore. The XJs. Okay, the newer ones, a new, uh, uh, you know, classification. Whatever. It's an old Jeep, 19 year old vehicle, new Jeep, 90 plus thousand miles on it. And, uh, you know, that's new. Wow. Really? Brand new. Yes, sir. 19 year old, uh, brand new Jeep. <laughs> thousand dollar deep seem to me better than mine's he complains about like uh oh this has games and stuff yeah that that's rusted our car you know uh oh buddy it's a it's a truck the one that you're showing there it's a truck okay chevy silverado it's a truck rusted our car Oh man, put the bottle down, okay? Or, or you know, and you say a bottle of alcohol. Well, bottle of alcohol, bo bottle of pharmaceutical pills, whatever you're on, you know. No, thank you. I don't want any. You know, just. But you know, just laugh at this stuff, okay? It's just ridiculous. You know, don't don't be offended by this. By the way, you see people like this attacking me. I laugh at this stuff, okay? It doesn't bother me. I mean. I know when I get attacked, I've been attacked really bad different times and uh, had some pretty high powerful people attack me. I mean, we've gotten letters from the Vatican. Okay. Um, I do mean people working at the Vatican too. I'm not joking. Uh, this stuff, you know, don't let it bother you. Let's continue. So what? So what? See in the background? That's his vehicle that he runs. That Jeep. The Jeep. Huh. It's a Chevy Tracker. The little white thing there. It's a Chevy Tracker. 2003, I think. 2004 Chevy Tracker. It's got 160,000 miles on it. The transmission's going out. Uh, it didn't pass inspection this year. And my truck didn't pass inspection this year. So I lost two vehicles this year as a result of the bad rust on the roads up here, or the bad rust, yeah. The stuff that they put on the roads up here to melt the snow, six months out of the year, we're getting, you know, our vehicles destroyed. Um, so, yeah, I lost two vehicles this year. They're no longer inspectable. They still run somewhat. Uh, but, yeah, just, to, again, to, to let you support this ministry you can see where the money is is going here okay i don't buy new vehicles i mean right now my two old vehicles that i have my truck i'm going to try to get it through this winter as a plow truck it has a plow bracket thing on the front it's not even a real great plow i put it on myself but it's a push plow type of a thing i'm going to try to get it through this winter and plow as much as i can um We'll see if it makes it through the winter. Uh, it, it actually, the motor is pretty good, um, but the thing is just falling apart. I mean, the, the rust is just terrible on the truck. Uh, the Chevy Tracker, uh, when it starts to get cold, you know, the, the, the transmission fluid gets a little bit, you know, heavier, a little thicker, and it, it'll, you know, I'll go to drive it, and it'll just, all of a sudden, it'll slip out of gear, and then it'll go back into gear again, and it's not real good. So probably it's going to let us sit sometime, but we drive it as much as we can um, just around our property and things. It's no longer inspected. So, but I buy a Jeep, a 19 year old Jeep, and I'm just being frivolous with the Lord's money. Um, you know, and, and there isn't a level of accountability that I have to the body of Christ. That's why I'm open and honest about this stuff. You know, my private property where I live. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that. It's private. I don't want people, you know, coming and, taking pictures or just walking onto my land or whatever else. No, it's a private place. Okay. But yeah, I'll be honest about some of this stuff, but you know, good night. Here we go. Continue. Still runs that. So why can't you use that? Yeah, yeah, and, and just look at the, 
look at this you know his searches i mean right there again this this foul thing that people use with my last name these are saved people and they'll make a they'll turn denlinger into this down here they're saved you know and it, Anderson's cult does this. A lot of these people, Robert Breaker's cult does this too. They'll, they'll make, you know, filthy things about my last name, but these are saved people, you know, but just look at the, look at the searches. Brian Denlinger, Brian Denlinger, Brian Denlinger, Brian Denlinger. And, and Sam Salween down here, whatever I like to call him, the, the Trinity guy, but people are obsessed. <laughs> Um, let's see. All his books. See, there's all his books and stuff. That's his new house. That's he has tons and tons of books. That's what the uh, the donations went to too. <laughs> well, well, the donations went to. Okay, let's look at the picture here. This. King James 1611 right here was given to me. This one here, a pastor gave me that one. That's the RV, revised version, um, authorized version, parallel Bible from the late 1800s, given to me by a pastor. This one was given to me by another friend of the ministry, the 1769 King James Bible. This old Bible here is 18, I can't remember, the 1840s or something like that it goes back to. Uh, Pastor Guy Mosebrook, Liberty Baptist Church, gave me that Bible, given to me. Um, a lot of these Bibles behind my head here were sent to me by people, saying, if you know somebody that you can give one to, and I do give people Bibles and things. So um, these two books up here are Islamic books that were given to me. I actually had a Muslim give me all these different colored books right here. A sister in the Lord gave me these History on the Jewish People books right here. A lot of these books were given and sent but you know again i'm in international ministry uh shouldn't i have some books you know uh, probably a good idea to have a few books if you're in international ministry just a thought let's continue and says four wheeler I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, what else? See. Uh, anyways. So he's just sitting on this money. Actually is. So he's just sitting on this money. Actually is. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, man, just continue here. I'm going to answer this thing here because that's funny. I mean, got his ministry office, about like probably this is his third office, probably. <laughs> you complete that trailer one, and uh, so this is the second. Well, yeah, you got his house, his regular house, his new house. Uh, that trailer he converted, I think that's what that one. Uh, is with all the wood is with all the wood paneling like uh you know uh like a western kind of feel to it so western kind of feel i i i decorate my offices in in themes apparently <laughs> western kind of feel it's tongue and groove pine which i built myself um yeah okay continue here so he has three offices and an ambulance, a bus. Uh, I've moved, uh, you know, different times over the last six years. And open and honest about all of it. But see, they make it look like I'm just doing this all right now. Just, just, oh man, I must be making millions of dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three cars. Um, Two of which aren't inspectable anymore. 
And you forgot my amulets. So I pulled over on you there, you know. Uh, yeah, my old ambulance that needs work and things. So, yeah. Oh, a car and one that you just bought of a truck that you're on the around, just a, a, a beater. Um, no, it's not inspectable anymore. It's not inspectable. I can't just run it around. I, I don't even want to drive the thing on the road. I use it for doing, you know, firewood and trimming things on my property and plowing. And that's it. Okay. The the bed and the cab where it meets is twisted. I showed that in my video, but he didn't want to show that part. So ambulance, the bus, um, couple properties, Brian Dingler, the the money grabbing, sitting on thirty two thousand dollars. And uh I don't know. I don't know. Well, let me explain to you there. Um I'm sitting on thirty two thousand. No. Uh, that's showing how much we raised since 2018 for the project of getting a new ministry office. Okay. Uh, let me just show you here really quickly. This is the original page still there. Okay. 32,738 raised a $40,000 goal. We never reached the goal of $40,000. Okay. The Lord provided us with a place that was 30,000 where I'm now sitting. And it took us years to be able to get that property. Okay, the whole time I'm putting out, you know, videos and things like that for free, not charging anybody anything for the videos. It's an online ministry reaching thousands of people. You know, show me another one that's doing the work that we do for and, and the, on the same budget. There aren't any. Okay, but let's see what happens if you push donate, donate now. Donations paused. Our team has contacted the organizer with a solution and donations will resume once the issue is resolved. Okay. You say, what's the contact? Right here it is. In my personal email account, Friday, September 18th of 2020, 10.01 a.m. I'm not going to show the emails from them or me, whatever. Hello, this is a reminder that starting September 30th, 2020, your current fundraiser will no longer be able to accept new donations. If you have already submitted a request or are okay with no longer accepting donations after September 30th, 2020, no need to take any further action, which is exactly what I did. I didn't take any further or I didn't do anything else and, and try to tell them and keep the thing going. So the GoFundMe thing ended. For some reason, they still have the page up, but it's over. You can't give to that anymore. Okay. Which I showed the proof there. It's paused. It doesn't work anymore. All right. Oh, but look at it. He's sitting on $32,738. Uh, no, uh, they send you the money every month. So if one month you raise $200, if one next month you raise, raise $1,200 or whatever else, they send that money to you. There's no GoFundMe bank out there that has $32,738 that they're going to give me when I ask for it. Okay, they send it to you every month. So uh, this rocks for brains guy here that made this video is openly lying. First, at the very beginning, he said that we raised forty thousand. Now it's back down to set thirty-two thousand. No proof. We didn't. We never raised forty thousand dollars. Sorry, didn't happen. Um, but secondly, they actually send it to you in small increments as it's raised. So we saved up our money. And kept praying that the Lord would provide a place, and He has. And the ministry goes forward. That's what these devils don't like. They don't like the fact that God is actually blessing this ministry and God is actually using this ministry. That's what they don't like. Let's continue. So, you, you, so we lie about, um, he him giving you having people give to him sitting on thirty two thousand dollars. We lie. Yes, I just proved that you did. I'm not sitting on thirty two thousand dollars. There is no money coming to me from GoFundMe anymore. All this stuff, and we lie about that. He he's not just living off of you. He's buying all this stuff. 
normal expenses over the course of six years since we've officially moved to Maine. Seven years, if you want to go back to when we first bought property. We moved in 2014, January of 2014. So we're approaching, you know, seven years of living here, but definitely, you know, seven years of, of owning property in Maine. Yeah, it's cameras and stuff like that. Yeah, like that's the further ministry, but that's not the ministry to, to, to buy houses and other things. You do it in in your uh, one of your rooms in your house. That's what you should should have done. Oh, it's what we did for years and years at Bridgewater. Are you going to turn that new house into like a house church? I don't think. I think it's a new office. So, how's your books? <laughs> so he's making any noise. This cracks me up. Sorry. Um, are, you, are we going to turn this into a house church? Uh, well, we will meet with people here, but um, this is this is a ministry office. Okay. Um, I, I don't have a problem, you know, uh, meeting with people. Certainly not. I mean, I literally uh, I, I meet neighbors, you know, people walking the, the street up here. I've witnessed the people right out here in front of the place. And we have a lot of work to do right now, but eventually there's going to be signs, gospel signs on the property here. People telling people how to get saved and, and whatever. And word's been spreading around the town here that, hey, there's a preacher moved in, you know, and, and I'm getting a lot of people and they say, um, so what do you do for a living? I say, well, I'm a preacher, King James Video Ministries. Oh, and they look around and they'll go, where's your church at? <laughs> uh, well, we worship at home. And like the Bible says in the New Testament, people worshiped in their homes and the church is not some building that you go to. And, and I get the, oh, OK, you know, and this uncomfortable look that I've dealt with for many years. Um, we've had some real good conversations with local people here, um, had some great opportunities to witness. Looking forward to more of it as time goes by. I'm not afraid of people. I like to talk to people. OK, we're not hermits. We don't live in the middle of nowhere and, and uh, you know run away from people or something like that. Uh, we live in a very remote area, yes, but we like to talk to people. We like to witness to people. But uh, I, I'm not going to be putting cameras in people's faces to, to make dramatic moments so I can get a lot of views on YouTube. You know, it's just, it's, it's weird. These, these people, they just, they know so much about me. It's just, that's the thing. It's always impressed me about this, but continue. So we have three ministry offices, a ambulance, a bus, trailer, two houses, uh, two or three properties with acres upon acres of land, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh. Welcome. No, uh, you know, Brian Dengler, the money grabber. Uh, I hope you're happy with all of this. Okay. See ya. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. Um, Brian Denlinger, the money grubber. I hope you're happy. Um, well, yes, I do have joy in Jesus Christ and my salvation. Um, I do have joy in knowing that I've helped a lot of people. Um, I've met a lot of really neat people over the years and I've been there for people. So yes, I, I am actually, I do have a lot of joy. I'm happy as well. So thank you. I'm glad that you I hope that I'm happy. I am. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, you know, I see, and, you know, it was torture. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, I get back to. Just a little time of fellowship with everybody here. Just some question and answer time, I guess. So, uh, so, um, yeah. But you know, hey, anybody, if you have questions seriously about what we do, what how we live, whatever else, you know, um, he's wearing his mask. He might be, you know, don't want to get baloney virus, um, but. Oh man, that that's one of the best ones I've heard. 
um, I, I saw another one the one time uh, people were having a conversation. Oh, I forgot to do the one thing. Let me let me just. Um, no, that's not the one. Oh, ah, well, I won't bother. But I, I read the comments sometimes. Some, some of these things, you know, um, I'll just go because, pe again, people link me to stuff. They say, hey, check this out or, or you know, some of the brave followers of these people, they'll they'll post links, you know. You need to watch this if you believe in Denlinger, and I don't think, okay, what's this? And I'll click on a link and I'll look at it a little bit. No, oh, brother, you know, it's one of these. And, and you know, what am I going to do? Just oh, well, they they have a right to post nonsense on you know stupid nonsense to try to destroy my ministry. Uh, no, I delete it and I block them from the channel. I don't have time to waste with trolls. You know, um, just that simple. I remember going to a Baptist church the one time where I was sort of. You know, acting as assistant pastor, um, the last one I went to, and I preached for the pastor there and preached many times in the pulpit. There's old videos of me preaching there. I posted on my channel. And this charismatic guy came the one night, and he was in all kinds of weird heresy. And of course, you can lose your salvation. He was saying, and it got rather heated. And I was arguing with the guy and whatever else, and and you know. I mean, it, it, if he would have said, I'm going to stay here, whatever, I'd have said, out, get out the door. Uh, I'm not, you don't let wolves into the congregation. You don't let people come in that are bad. You know, people coming in and having disagreements is fine. But when you get people that are just trying to destroy ministry, you kick them out. That's what the Bible says to do. Uh, and then, I, and then you know, they'll lie about you and whatever else. Evil report. That's just there. But, um, you know, I, I've tried to do my best, and uh, and YouTube is a terrible place. Let's just be honest. YouTube is an awful place to try to do ministry. <laughs> um, again, you know, it's it's not my fault for being on YouTube. It's all of you out there. I'll blame you people because you have so many good questions. You know, and I'm too dumb to quit. You know, I just I people ask me questions. I say, yeah, I don't have a sermon on that. That's a really good question. I probably should do a sermon on that and a sermon is created and then and then you know the Lord will give me some things and my wife does research as well and she'll you know she'll find things the Lord shows her things and and then and away we go and here I am all these years later and uh, you know you say well you know um, if this work of this council be of men it will come to naught well YouTube is a, is of men I'm in a public forum here it's not my website um, will it come to naught? Yeah, it will. Um, eventually, there won't be any Bible believers on YouTube. You know, uh, Robert Faker Breaker and Gene uh, Clickbait Kim, uh, those guys are monetized channels, and so they'll be big shots on YouTube probably from now till the Antichrist shows up and they start worshiping him. Um, whatever, you know, they're they're monetized, they're getting paid, they're not being persecuted by anybody. You know, the atheist websites out there like Rational Wiki, they're not even attacking Robert Brake or Gene Kim. They don't even say anything. And those guys got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. You know, just, you know, I don't want hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't want monetization coming from YouTube. That's not the point. The point is, you know, ways that you can tell who's legitimate. Um, how many enemies do they have? Okay. I mean, you hear testimony. That's great. Here, preacher, what's their testimony? All right. Um, if you haven't heard mine, you can watch my video where I go through the, the story of Brian Dellinger, who, how I got saved. But just very quickly, I was raised in going to church buildings. Um, false profession of faith when I was a boy in Sunday school because it was pressured. And uh, I didn't want to feel stupid. So I raised my hand that I wanted to be saved. And I went out in the hall and prayed the prayer. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, I love the Lord. I, 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 I really sincerely did. I believed the Bible and I did believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins, but I didn't understand what sin really was or anything else. I was a boy, little, little boy taken advantage of in, in Sunday school by a, a zealous teacher that wanted to get converts. And so she could come and say, we had, you know, 12 children saved in Sunday school today. And, you know, so I fell for it and I thought, hey, I'm a Christian. This is great. I go to church and my parents are teaching Sunday school and everything else in the church. We're a Christian family, even though we went to public school and we, you know, watched 
television and there was no conviction of that and rock music and, and the whole thing, but we were Christians. And uh, years later, I got into the art world. I got into logging and um, I just got to a point where I was just miserable. I had no reason to live. Um, actually was about ready to kill myself. Uh, I was very suicidal at the time and very deep depression. And I came to a point, I just walked outside of my um, art studio one night and I just looked up at the sky and I said, God, I know you're real. I know you're real. And I just don't know what, what is the point of life. And I just want you to give me wisdom. Had no idea about James chapter one, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, up, liberally and upbraideth not. I had no idea. I couldn't have quoted that to save my life. But I came to a point where I was broken and the Lord started to show me truth. I didn't get saved right then when I called out to the Lord, but he showed me truth and truth. And I started to realize I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. Um. I'm not born again. There's no way. I, I I can't say I'd go to heaven right now if I died. And I got down on my knees for the first time, totally broken, and just said, God, I want to. I, I need to be saved. Please save me. Um, I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of my life. I, I'm scared. And I'm going to stay here on my knees until I know that I'm saved. And please, God, save me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, rose again. Um, According to the scriptures, I, I believe that. I see it now. I, I used to make fun of the Bible as a saved, you know, Christian in my teenage years. I used to make fun of the King James Bible. And I wasn't making fun anymore. And uh, the Lord saved me. And uh, then just saved me, you know, called me into the ministry, which really still blows my mind. But that's my story, basically my testimony. So you, you look at a, a preacher, you look at his testimony. Then you look at the Bible that he uses. Well, my King James Bible. Oh, there it is. Look at the Bible that he uses. The Holy Spirit will not lead a man to use a new version. Okay, uh, not happening. Some guy that uses a new version, he might be ignorant of the issue, and you know, later on become a Bible believing Christian once he's straightened out on the facts. But the Holy Spirit will not lead a man to preach for five, ten, twenty years out of a new version. Not happening. This is God's book for English speaking people. And then you look at his doctrine after that. And then you look at the fruit that he produces. And um, I've been examined by so many different people over the years. This ministry has been critiqued and criticized almost like no other ministry out there. And we're still here. And the Lord still blesses. And you get a blessing out of watching the videos. And that's all there is to say about that. So, but, uh, you know, anybody at all, I mean, if you have questions about what we do or whatever else, or how many vehicles we have, if that's really important, you know, or, or how many of these books that I actually buy here behind me, um, I did actually, I have to admit to something, I have to admit, I bought something here for the ministry, I'll show it. You can't because you can't really see it too good. There's actually my old uh, my old sign back here um, from when I was in the art world. This is what I would have at my art shows when I would go. I'll show this quick. That's my old business sign this way. So that's my last name. Over there, Denninger, of course. And um, this is my initials here. B, then there's a T, D. And this is what I would put underneath the wooden bowls when I would make them. But this I would hang at my art shows at my uh, booth where I would be selling my work. It is made out of a plank of solid ash from a guy that I got it from. So the back's not finished. Still has the old water stains. I never cleaned it or sanded it or anything else. It's just the old, you can see that this is called sticker stain down here when lumber dries, it's air dried ash. But anyhow, but I'll show this. This one I bought, 
recently. This is a kind of a little message to the higher ups within the popery, the kind of spirit that uh, is behind this ministry. So this is a replica of the sword that Oliver Cromwell used in battle. So this is what he carried into into uh, battle. So the same fighting spirit against Roman Catholicism that Oliver Cromwell had is uh, what I seek to have in my ministry. Uh, Cromwell knew about the temporal power of the Vatican. If you don't understand what that means, the Vatican has two powers. Temporal and spiritual. They believe that they have the right to rule the world through the political structure, which they do through Catholic knighthoods and, you know, Knights of Equestrian Order, Knights of Malta, Knights of, um, you know, Columbus, whatever. Uh, they control temporally. All the kings of the earth bow down to the Vatican. They're, they commit fornication uh, with the Vatican. And that's why you see all the presidents, all the world leaders go and meet with the Pope. It's right there in front of your face. Uh, again, if you're newly saved, you might not see that. You might not understand that. But you read Revelation chapter 17, and it describes the political and spiritual power of the Vatican. And they openly admit to the uh, both spiritual and temporal powers of the Vatican. Um, I have this book here which I've shared many times, but uh, the church teaches by Jesuit fathers at Saint, of St. Saint Mary's College. And um, if I remember correctly, there's something in the back about the spiritual and temporal power of the, of the Vatican. But they have just, I think it's over 200 anathemas in here. You know, if anybody doesn't believe this or that, you know, let them be anathema. You know, they're cursing people, in other words. I don't know where it's at, but they talk about the spiritual and temporal power. I don't have that page marked. But anyhow, is this the one? No, it's not there. Trying to find it, it wasn't, but it's in there. But they talk about that that whole thing. So, um, I'll show your comment here, Jacob. I was a few minutes behind that shepherd's ambassador loser's name is Tony Alvetro. He reviewed my book. He read the introduction and proceeded to say I did not address X, Y, and Z. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure he's a real scholar, you know. Scholar of the bottle, perhaps. Um, Much of my family voted for Trump, even after I showed them evidence that he's a Jesuit. They say he's the lesser of the two evils, and they claim to be a Christian as well. I'd never vote for Jesuit. Good. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that are falling for it. Um, he tells you what you want to hear. Jesuit, uh, Trump's, Jesuit. Uh, Trump is a con man. That's why he's rich. Okay. Question, when we can no longer use mail, email, and comments, how do you uh, recommend we gather locally together? Should we backpack, backpack from town to town, homeless? Um, the Lord will have to lead in that. I don't know. You know, the, the whole thing is you read the book of Acts. Just study the book of Acts, and you'll see that the, the church is it's very flexible. They get persecuted here. They move over this way. Um, they, they're fleeing. They can move. And I think the Lord's going to return that, the body of Christ. Um, if you don't live in a, a very very remote area, there's a good chance you're going to have to be fleeing and moving other places and, and things. Um, that's why you know you don't have to worship the Lord every week from nine to twelve on Sunday. Uh, it can be flexible, whenever, wherever. <clears throat> 
question. Do you know anything about uh, Amharic Bibles? I think you mean Aramaic. Um, I am yet to find a perfect translation. If I can't find any, um, what should I do? If you mean Aramaic, I'm not really sure on that one. I'm not sure. Maybe you're saying Amharic, but I don't know. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the whole thing of translations being available in every, every language is not really a biblical thing. The Lord went through the Old Testament and all they had, all his word was written in was Hebrew. Then the New Testament, Greek, um, and then the whole Bible, English. Um, you, can you make accurate translations? Yeah, but they should line up with the King James Bible. That's my belief. Do you believe John 9, 4 through 5 is a reference to a preacher rapture? I find there are similarities to 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. What are your thoughts on this passage? John 9, 4 through 5. Let me go there quick. <clears throat> I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As in when Jesus Christ leaves, the body of Christ leaves, um, that, you know, the work's not going to be done anymore in terms of uh, the body of Christ and things. Yeah, actually I do. That's very good. Question, what does your Foxfire book series look like, brother? I bought a set recently and things I have, thing I have reprints. In other words, um, not old, used. Yeah, uh, the newer ones are paperback. We, we have some of the older ones that are hardback. I've found them and, you know, we go to used bookstores and sometimes it takes years, sometimes to find a full set. And we don't even have the full set yet. But the, the old ones, the hardback ones we like because we prefer the hardback. I, my first Foxfire book was the original one, and um, it was just the old paperback, and the thing's just falling apart. So we were able to find another one hardback, and um, but you know when they update them, a lot of times they'll bring in new information and whatever. So that's why we try to stick with first editions and, and whatever else. It can be hard to find sometimes. It's not going to be easy to to find that stuff, but. Um, be an interesting thing to compare them. I've never done that. Uh, question, Genesis chapter 26, I think it says Abraham followed the laws and statutes of the Lord. So was there a law before the law? Well, um, Abraham lived under a system of grace. Uh, well, grace has always been there, but faith and works. Um, he had to have faith that God would provide himself a lamb. He speaks that. Um, when he goes up to sacrifice his son, and yet he had to go and sacrifice his son, which, you know, the Lord stopped it, of course, but there was faith and works there. Um, so there were certain things that were in as laws there before the Mosaic law. Um, sacrificing animals and things like that. They did that. You know, we don't have to do that today. But you'll see that up and even before the time of Moses, you'll see the thing of their, their sacrificing animals to the Lord which, like I said, we don't have to do that. <clears throat> okay, um, what do you think of the New King James Version? It's another um, new version from the Vatican. You'll see, if you look at the footnotes of the New King James, uh, just see if there's one here. Yes. Now, they've since been very careful to take this symbol off, the Trichetra, um, of the witchcraft trinity, the false pagan satanic symbol here. But this is the New King James Version. And what they'll do is, in the New Testament, a lot of times they'll, you know, right here, um, it says uh, N-U text and M text reads U. NU text omits through the spirit. NU text 
boom, it's forever. Let's see if I can show this here down here at the very bottom of the page. One focus there. There it is. Okay. And so what they do is they'll put similar text to the King James up here in the actual text, but then they draw it into question down here with the Alexandrian manuscripts. The Nestle Aland, the NU, what they're referring to is Nestle Aland and the United Bible Society's text. Okay. So they'll, they'll, and the M there that you see is the majority text, which is not the, the Textus Receptus. It's uh, the majority text is made by Hodges and Farstad. Um, I have a copy of it here somewhere. Yeah, right there. This is the majority text right there. Okay, you can see the Hodges and Farstad right here if it will focus there thomas nelson catholic book publisher but this is not the textus receptus again let me explain the different types of greek texts for everybody out there okay this is a textus receptus this is basically what the translators of the king james bible would have had when they made their translation this is a greek text Okay, they they find ancient manuscripts and they compile them into a text, right? These ones here are the received text. Okay, the so the vast majority, ninety nine percent of extant Greek manuscripts match this text. This one here is the Nestle's twenty eighth edition. Okay, the latest Nestle's text. All right, and the I don't think it has it in the forward of this one. Um, uh, they, they did put a new thing in the 28th edition, as you can see right up there at the top, the Catholic letters and things. And they, but this one here is an Alexandrian text. This one comes from, this is a Syrian Antioch. This one here is uh, Alexandrian Egypt and the less than 1% support the changes that were made in this text okay um but if you go with the uh 27th edition of the nestle's text which is right here you can see 27 on the spine there this is the nestle Aland. um down here talks about the the this text you know, was made under the supervision and agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies. It has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. So this is a Catholic text. Again, I'll show that down at the bottom there. You can see it there. Okay. So you have Nestles. 27th, 28th, Textus Receptus. And then here you have the majority text, which is a joke, because what they did is they took Receptus readings up here and they blended them with Nestle's type of stuff right here, and then they call it the majority. It's not the majority. Okay, so, yeah, just to kind of clear that up. Um, Hopefully that answers your question. Back to questions here. Question, were, were you able to get everything done to prepare you and your family for winter? And if you need anything, let me us know. Um, yesterday, uh, we have a, just to kind of explain a little bit more about our personal uh, stuff that we do, the way we live and whatever else. Um, we have two springs on our property. Neither one is able to, we can't really get water out of them at this point. The one is a spring fed, like a little pond, maybe about 16 feet in diameter. It's not a very big pond, um, but the moose like to go down there and they like to drink from it. So you can't really, they probably drink and urinate in it and whatever else. And so we don't really want to get water from there. Um, it is spring fed little pond, but um, not a real good source for water. 
And then there's one that's called a side hill seep. We just discovered it this past winter, and we are going to try and work on that. And if anybody has information on how to work on a side hill seep spring, it comes out of a, there's a hill going down, there's a little bit of, there's a big rock, and then underneath the rock, the water comes out and it runs down through the woods. Um, and it's a pretty, pretty good flow. So I'm excited about that. We're going to have to build some kind of a box or something and put a pipe that comes out and goes down the hill and then comes out. And then we can just go to that pipe for, for running water. Um, we're not going to drill a well. Again, talking to our neighbors, it's really rocky up there because it's up on top of a mountain, essentially. Not the very peak, but it's up in the mountains. And uh, about 900-something feet above sea level. So, um, uh, so we have to get water from another place. There's a spring that we drive to to get our, our drinking water. And, um, and we also use rainwater catchment for uh, washing clothes, bathing, washing dishes, that kind of thing. Um, so we, we have the, the springs in the area basically go dry in the summer months. And so including our own spring. Um, and so we have a big, we bought a big tank and we go and we fill it manually. And then that we can stretch that um, through a couple months of, of summer. Well, the then right before everything freezes, we have to drain the tank or else it just turns into solid ice inside there. So we did that yesterday and um, the springs are back up again. They're running again. So that's what we do for running water. Um, so we did that yesterday. We were doing firewood. Um, there's still a few projects that we have to get done before winter hits. Um, very, it's a, it's a tough life here. Um, you know, again, we're doing it as a way that we can tell people in the future, here's how you can live without debt. Here's how you can save lots of money and whatever else, you know, uh, Paul wrote and he said, I am made all things to all men, but I might by all means save some. When you get into ministry, the Lord will put you through things so that you can witness to other people and you can tell other people how to do things. So, but good question. Uh, yes, we do have still, we still do have some things to get done. Um, do I have an opinion on Dr. Walter Martin? Yes, I do. It, he takes it easy on the Catholics. I don't trust him. Zipping down through here. Greetings from Scotland. Thank you so much for your videos. I've been watching nonstop and learning from you, and it's changed my life. Thank you for bringing, bringing me back to the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, you know, that keeps me going again. I get, we get that a lot and wow. You know, I, I always love to hear that. Question. Do you believe the Antichrist is born of a man and woman? Ruckman said he would come from a UFO. Not sure if he was serious or joking. If so, I think he is alive today waiting to be revealed. I think the Antichrist is alive today waiting to be revealed. But um, Ruckman was joking about the UFO thing. Uh, I, I know this sermon, he goes, you know, he talks about this UFO come down, this 13 foot tall Christ steps out. I, I think he was just kind of messing around there. Um, I do think he's just going to be a, a mortal man. You know, I don't think he's going to be born somehow supernaturally or whatever. It's just that the devil is going to inhabit him. Um, Question, what was the significance and meaning of the circumcision in the Old Testament? I've heard that Christians today are circumcised uh, in the sense that soul and flesh are separate. Yes, they are. Um, uh, that's in the Bible, but we're not going to go into the whole thing there. But uh, the, the Lord did a few things to separate the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, from the heathen nations around them. And circumcision was a part of that. So... I'm trying to get to
Question, should we resign to a cashless system or should we leave while we are not completely tracked? If we leave, how will we buy and sell? Um, do what you can to minimize you know, your purchasing from stores that are all about cashless type of things. Try to do cash as much as, as, as you can just to kind of rebel against the system. I mean, it's inevitable they'll they'll outlaw cash. They're you know trying to make little jabs at cash with the coronavirus thing. Um, yeah, um, but you know, there's ways that you can live where you don't need a lot of money. Make yourself poor so that you can be rich. Another way to say it. Question: Please remind us where you get quality cotton clothes. Um, well, secondhand stores are a good place. We go there a lot. I am literally wearing a. This is a, a secondhand um, sweater. It's a wool sweater. I wear it in the winter time. Underneath this wool sweater, underneath here is a wool vest that I got on eBay. Um, and then this is a cotton flannel shirt here. And I did buy that new. I got that from Amazon. But um, just, you know, shop around. They get a depression below it and build a box around it with a lid. Yeah, um, that's what we're going to do. But the problem is it's kind of, it, it the rock kind of comes like this, but then it kind of flattens out for a ways. And it's kind of swampy right there. So it's kind of a, you know, I would normally, if it was a really good hill, I would just, you know, build a little box around it, let the water fill up and come out a pipe and call it good. Uh, I mean, it's basically what we get our water from. There's a pipe um, where they, you know, have water coming out there. Um, so it's kind of tricky because it's about maybe 20 feet till it kind of goes downhill again. And it's a swamp in there. So not sure what I'm going to do yet. If I have to run a pipe the whole way down the hill or I don't know, it's going to be a lot of work, but question, what hymn book would you recommend? Um, I got it up here, I think. This is one I used um, for a long time. It's all worn pretty badly. Uh, Living Hymns, it's called. But I've had different people tell me it's not really one of the best ones. I mean, you can't even see the hymns anymore word there. But it has most of the old hymns um, in it. Um, you know, so it's, it's one I've found to be decent. But. There's others out there. I'm not really all that great on that question, to be honest with you. So. What is a Foxfire book? A Foxfire book is, well, we don't have them here. They're not here at the office. Um, Years ago, in the 1970s, I believe it was, um, there was a school teacher down in, I think, North Carolina, and he came up with a project uh, to get his students um, to pay attention more in, in class. And it was basically go on out and interview older people like your grandparents or elderly people that are in the area and get them to explain how they did things before electricity and before modern ways came in. And so these students would go out and they would actually interview older people and they would talk about, you know, they would audio record and then they would basically write phonetically you know, how they were speaking, write it out and it, and it, in a series of, it, it was a magazine, then it became a book series. And it's really fascinating stuff about how mountain people lived in the Appalachian mountains. Um, Back many years ago, a uh, lot of interesting wisdom and things there. Don't agree with everything that they say, but um, that's what the Foxfire books are. How to build a log home, how to raise pigs, how to, you know, out there in the mountains, um, how to hunt, how to fish, folk medicine, things like that. Question. Do you think that there is a spiritual tie with the mark of the beast to where it can where it only can be accepted by free will. Um, yeah, I do. Um, I don't think that it that it's going to be forced in the in the sense of people won't understand it or whatever else. Um, I think that it will be 
a clear join, you know, and, and give your allegiance to the beast type of a deal. It isn't going to be just a banking thing. They're, you know, um, they're, they're, they're going to have to merge uh, the political and the religious. And we see more and more Catholics coming in all the time to the political spectrum. I mean, we have no choice right now for president here in America. You know, Jesuit educated Trump, um, who gives his allegiance to the Catholic Church, the end of the Republican National Convention, they sang Ave Maria and did this whole invocation to Mary thing, or Joe Biden, who's an open Catholic. And Trump, who's the appoint for the Supreme Court Justice, Amy Coney Barrett or whatever else, which is a, a, a charismatic Catholic. She lives in a in a commune type of a thing with other charismatics. So, but that's where we're headed. Question, I moved out of my country two years ago and ever since I watched your video on interracial marriage, I've been wondering if I should go back to my homeland. Well, if your homeland is a good place, you know, my ancestors came to America to escape the Roman Catholic controlled religion thing of Bavaria. Um, that's where my ancestry is from. I mean, you, there's literally a town of Denkling in, in Bavaria and Denklinger Rotwold, a uh, red forest over there named after my ancestors. So we came, my ancestors came here in 1714 to Pennsylvania, actually. I've kind of migrated more north now in, in the state of Maine, but um, if I could go back to Bavaria, I would go back to Bavaria. I would go back to Germany. Um, I would love to go there. I would absolutely just, I think it'd be a really neat experience, but I don't think I could preach there the way I preach here. So that's why I'm still here. Um, what will happen in the future? I don't know. But if you can go back to your country, Lord calls you to go back, then go back. Absolutely. Question, are you excited for this wonderful vaccine coming out? Oh, yeah, I, I, can't, I just can't wait to get, you know, toxic chemicals put into my blood. You know, oh, I'm sorry, they mean muscle. You know, you put it up here in the muscle and it somehow magically doesn't get into the bloodstream, but yet it requires the bloodstream to get it to where it needs to go. Yeah, thankfully, and, and here's the point, just, just to really encourage you out there, um, here's something that you need to know. Any law, any law, no matter how it's passed or whoever passes it or whatever, they need to have 60% compliance for that law to pass, to, for it to actually be enforced, say it that way. Um, and if they don't have 60% of the population behind it that will submit to it, then the law is null and void. It doesn't work. They can't enforce it. The enforcers that these, that, you know, the government, the, the politicians, the police, the military, whatever else, they're very small in number compared to the vast majority of people. So they have, they don't have the manpower to go out and enforce a law that's unpopular. And that's why mandatory uh, face masking, it never you know, they, they tried to make it into the thing of a national mandate or whatever. Didn't work because 60% of the people did not comply. A lot of a large number of people just refused. And so we're not going to go along with it. And I, I saw um, the one part of the, the last presidential debate. And they literally, literally one of the questions was about, you know, that 40% of Americans said that they would possibly take the vaccine if it comes out. Well, then that means 60% are saying no. So that's a good thing. That's why we need to speak up. It's not just a hopeless, oh, well, we're just going to have to take it. That's all there is to it. It's not hopeless. We speak up. We're supposed to be a light in this dark world. We can turn enough people against this thing to push it back. So that's what I hope for. Uh, question, what do you think of Ruckman's note on 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 in his study Bible? He says the one taken out of the way is the man of sin, yeah, the Antichrist, that he gets killed and that, and then he comes back as the Antichrist, I guess, or something. Don't agree with him. doesn't make sense. Um, because he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. 
well, that doesn't really make any sense. You know, that the Antichrist is going to hinder himself from showing up till he's taken out of the way. Taken out of the way doesn't mean he dies and then he's resurrected. That's Ruckman was wrong on that. Ruckman was wrong on a bunch of things. King James Bible is my authority. Not Peter Ruckman. Which many people already know that, but Question. My parents don't talk to me because I married an English girl and they are Amish. What should I do? Um, well, your parents need to get saved. And I, I'm assuming that you're saved, that you're born again. I don't know. Um, but I understand the thing of shunning. Uh, it's what cults do. And your parents are afraid of being cast out of the church. Uh, exactly as the blind man's parents in John was it 9 or 10. Um, chapter 9 or 10. Um, yeah, I understand the Amish system very well. Um, you're going to have a very hard time getting them out of that system because they're going to have to be showed that they're sinners, that their works are not going to save them, that they're on their way to hell. And uh, they're going to have to walk away from their church. And that's going to be a tough one. Um, question, what would you... Advise a 19-year-old girl. What advice would you give a 19-year-old girl? Um, learn to be a keeper at home. Learn skills with your hands. Um, learn the Bible. Um, pray for a godly husband and wait for a godly husband. Um, do not compromise and just say, I want to get married. I, I'm not getting along with my parents. I'm just going to run out and get a, you know, this guy's, I'm interested in this guy and he's interested in me. I think he loves me. Um, he's got some issues. He smokes and he drinks and he looks at porn, uh, pornography occasionally, but I think it'll get better after marriage. Oh, brother. No, don't ever fall for that stuff. They, you know, unless the guy is born again, saved, don't mess with him. Um, if you're born again, if you're a Christian, wait for God's timing for a husband. And that might be a little while. But just be there if you're staying, if you're at home with your parents, then make yourself useful around the house. Um, say, hey, hey, mom, let me help with cooking. Let me help with cleaning. Teach me how to cook. Teach me how to clean things. I'll go clean the bathroom. I'll get down on my hands and knees and clean around the toilet. Whatever. Serve your parents. Honor thy father and mother. And uh, learn skills that will be useful to you in a future marriage. If you decide to stay single, then... You know, pray about what the Lord wants you to do there. All right. That's my advice to a 19 year old girl. That's the advice I would give. I don't know if you are a 19 year old girl, but I'm assuming you are. Okay. I, um, I just did a video showing that the vaccine will be tracked and linked to phones and stuff. Trump's goons are all involved and are being very secretive. Not real surprising, brother. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's trying to get the military to roll the thing out. Pretty sickening. I'm in the UK and they're putting us back in lockdown. Yeah, I heard that. There's no way I'm complying. Well, do what you can. You know, I think if people would come together in, in numbers again, see here again, um, there was a there was a scene in a movie that uh, Bob Jones University put out. I'm not a fan of Bob Jones University, but they put out a movie called The Printing. And there was a time when they actually uh, had a church service in Russia, Soviet Russia, when it was illegal. And they had, you know, 100 people come together and they were worshiping and the authorities came and they, they only took away the, the pastors the elders to take, take them off the prison, you know, and, and whatever. Um, but the point is you get enough people together and you get out in public and you do things and whatever. I think if we had Christians that could network and, and say, let's get together and let's all go to the store. And nobody wears face masks. Let's all walk into the store together. 20, 30 people, 10 people. Um, if you're, if you're a lady, a saved lady and your husband's saved, don't go to the store without your husband. Okay. Um, saved daughter don't go to the store without your dad or your you know older brother or something go in groups okay 
things have changed. We can't just say, oh, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be all right. Um, uh, we need to come together in, in power and strength and uh, do what we can to resist this, this evil. Um, question, what about the push for Noah, Noah Ed Law? I, I apologize. I, I saw that question earlier and I thought, no, I don't know. I don't. Maybe the Lord will bring it back to my mind and <laughs> he's not. I'm forgetting what that means. I'm sorry. If you could just clarify what the no-eyed law thing is. Forget what that is. Question. Are there any videos of you comment on apologetics? I saw a few videos from David Wood and he believes in Trinity. David Wood is a trained Jesuit. Okay, um, don't watch David Wood. He's no David Wood is no good. All right, he is a Trinitarian, and um, anybody that's been trained by the Jesuits, according to the Jesuits, is a part of the Jesuit family. So that's why I just call them Jesuits. So um, yeah, the apologetics thing is basically guys that that uh, want to destroy people with their intellectual arguments and superiority and whatever it's it's pride based is what the whole apologetics thing is um men of god are supposed to preach the word not get into scholarly debates and, and sit around and you know debate so and so and i'll debate so and so um question do you recommend books by walter martin no I was reading his Kingdom of the Cults, and he said something about the Bible being inerrant of the, in the originals only. Yeah, he's a typical new versionist, takes it easy on the Catholics. No, I don't recommend his books. I actually have them. People send them to me, but uh, and I was given one many years ago by my older brother, um, but I don't recommend him. Just seeing here. This is Carl. I don't know if you missed the, my question, bro. Have you checked out Grace and Truth Ministries, the pastors, Jim Brown? What do you think of us teachers? Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. Oh, nope. Ooh. Picked up the wrong one there. Just hold on. <laughs> Let me get that out of the way. I don't want to get corrupted from that thing. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 through 30. Hmm. I don't know. I've never heard. Jim Brown sounds familiar. Grace and Truth Ministry sounds familiar, but I dealt with a lot of things over the years. I'm not sure. Um, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he may be might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So I'm assuming probably it's a it's a Calvinistic thing because that's one of the Calvinistic favorite passages to go to. It's one of their go-to text, proof text. Um, so I don't really know much about him. But if, if he's going to that passage, Romans chapter 8, verse 29 through 30, it's probably a Calvinist. There's all kinds of problems with Calvinism. What do you think about Gideon brothers? I don't know about Gideon brothers, sister. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't really know about that. Gideons, I've heard of the Gideons that go out and give out Bibles and things, which I don't recommend them because they started going with New King James Bibles and and uh, using new versions to give out. Um, 
Have you listened to any EC Moore teachings? Um, I think he's a hyper dispensationalist. So, no, I don't listen to him. Do you think taking antidepressants is okay for a safe person, even if it helps? Um, no, I don't, because any kind of a pharmaceutical drug is a, is a form of witchcraft because they bend, shape, and change reality. That's the definition of witchcraft. They're doing it with toxic chemicals. And I've made a statement, very simple statement. You can't get good help from toxic chemicals. And believe me, you would not believe the stuff that they put in these pills. I mean, we have the medical books to prove it. You know, we've spent a lot of money on that. Um, so, yeah. Um, question, do you think Nabil Qureshi was saved? No idea. Um, I think he was some former Muslim or something, whatever, spoke different times. I don't really know uh, anything about the guy. Um, do you know of any good material on how the King James translators made certain decisions on their translation? Hmm. Boy, that's a good question. I don't know. There's a bunch of different books on that. Most of my books on the Bible version issue are back this way. You know, there are the Bibles up here. Then I have a bunch of stuff on the translation there. And down into here and, and even some stuff down there. Um, I can't name one off the top of my head. Um, maybe Gibbs' Understandable History of the Bible. Um, oh, boy. Good question. My adult saved son and I shop together. We wear no masks. No one has approached us to make us wear one. However, I have noticed when we enter Kroger's, a recording is heard to wear the mask. <laughs> Yeah, we would like to remind our shoppers to please practice social distancing and wear a face mask. Thank you. Yeah, I've heard the same kind of a thing. Uh, it's kind of whatever. <laughs> so. You just got to say this real quick. Uh, antidepressants have my depression so much worse. I've come off them recently and I've been feeling much better. Uh, pharmaceutical drugs are designed to basically stimulate different things in your mind, the blood vessels and, and whatever else. And it's it's kind of a, they, they get things active and then they, they start to wear off. And then they get things active and they start to wear off. And what happens is, things accumulate, there's poison and then the bio accumulates. In other words, it it gets into the body and it gets worse and worse. And it also creates more problems because it weakens your natural systems because it's artificially stimulating the blood vessels and things. So in time, you your dependence on the drug gets more. And it's, it's, it doesn't work like it once did. Same thing with antibiotics. Um, you go for antibiotics for a cold and, and the next time you go back, that same prescription won't work because your body, you know, the, the virus and or the bacteria will change and, and whatever. And so you need stronger antibiotics and stronger and stronger. And, and they need to, with prescription drugs, they need to up your prescription over and over again because it's, it's artificially stimulating the body. And the body's responding to the chemicals and the poisoning and saying, ugh, bad stuff. Um, so that's why you get people on antidepressants. They're not on the same one for 50 years or any kind of pharmaceutical drugs. They, they have to up the prescription all the time. It's destroying your body is what it's doing. Very, very wicked, very satanic. Um, question, is receiving pensions or retirement checks of God? Well, I understand the, the concept of retirement or getting a pension type of a thing and you're investing money into a 401k and they're matching the, what you put in. And so you get kind of thing back. The problem is um, 
I would call it uncertain riches because when the stock market collapses, which is not very far off, um, a lot of people are going to lose their 401ks. They're going to their investments that they're people putting things into the stock market. And you're getting the money coming back and whatever. It's going to crash. And so having that as a hope is a bad idea. Um, you know, there's a guy I watch, uh, an economist, and he says, if you don't own it or if you can't hold it, you don't own it. And that's very simple. And you see that throughout the Bible. Abraham was wealthy because he had possessions. Um, and it wasn't just gold and silver and precious stones. It was, you know, cattle and lands and, and whatever else. Um, it's one of the reasons, you know, that that, that wing nut that I showed in the beginning of the video, um, he's talking about land that we bought and whatever else. Well, part of the reason I bought land is because, number one, if the economy goes bad, I can log my own property and sell logs and make money that way. Secondly, um, it's something that I can pass on to my son that I know will have some future value. If I just take all my money and stick it in the retirement account someplace, well, that's probably not going to be there for my son someday. So now I understand that catching up is probably going to happen because before my son becomes an adult. I get it. But the Bible says I'm supposed to lay up uh, for my children. Uh, a good father will provide for his own. So the best way for me to provide for my son is uh, to have enough land that we can log it in the future if we need to, which we're already preparing. We're pruning trees and things. We like to go out as a family and prune trees. I know we're weird, but uh, we like to prune trees and, you know, increase the health of our property um, so the trees get bigger, get healthier. So one day if we log it, be decent money. So if you don't, just remember that statement. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. That's a problem with retirement and pension. Question, will you be doing any street preaching in the future? Possibly. I've gotten out of it simply because right now with the climate in this country, um, doing street preaching, it's not something I'm called to do all the time. I have done it in the past, but um, this country is a powder keg ready to explode right now. And I'm just going to kind of let things kind of go for a little while. And then um, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of always on call in terms of that. If, um, if anybody ever goes out here and tries to protest or whatever else, I will go out and preach to them. Um, you know, our old property up in Bridgewater, uh, that place there, um, they had a rock concert and I went out and I preached to them and things. So if I am ever, ever at some place and there's some wicked thing going on, I will street preach at that type of a thing. Um, so, um, a very good question. Question, when reading the ingredients section before I buy something, which chemicals should I look for in order to avoid the product? I don't think of the, the books here. There's a, there's a book, a little small paperback book, which is called um, What is in Your Food? I think it's called that. Um, and it goes over a lot of the additives. Um, again, just to explain commercial food. Commercial food, uh, they, they have to put things in it as preservatives okay there are certain things that they do there to keep it on the store shelf for a long time it's not fresh but it has to stay in a decent condition or whatever so they put chemicals in to preserve it. they also put chemicals in to enhance the flavor <clears throat> um, those things are are um, excitotoxins is what they're called um, and those things would fall under monosodium glutamate is one um, and it's MSG, uh, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, solids, corn. Uh, there's all kinds of things, corn sweeteners, and they have all different types of names to hide high fructose corn syrup. Um, another one of the names for MSG is natural flavors. You'll see that. Um, <clears throat> magnesium stearate, also another one that you want to avoid. Um, hydrogenated vegetable oils, uh, bad stuff on that. Um, I have a study that's um, uh, the sin of gluttony and how to fight against it, I think is what it's called. It's an old, old study. I did it years ago before we came to Maine. 
and you can watch that. And I get into a lot of those food additives, stuff that you should avoid. Um, and you will notice a difference, by the way, when you start to avoid those things. And that's that's good answer here, brother Matthew. Uh, anything that you cannot dig out of the ground yourself or pick from bushes, trees. Go to the fresh produce area of your grocery store, and that's usually going to have you know if it if it has an ingredients label list on the back, <laughs> good chance it's going to have something bad in it. But you know, you can, I'm not saying don't buy anything without an ingredients list. Please hear me out there. But you know, just be careful. Minimally processed foods is is what you're looking for as natural as possible. Question, is it okay for a medical checkup, checkup for a woman's issue just to find out what's wrong, not for treatment meds, et cetera? Well, I would simply say with that, um, find ways it, it's just, it's so bad going to the doctor because they're, you know, most doctors are, they're pushing pharmaceutical pills and, and they'll, they'll get it, you know, I mean, they, they will, they will do this thing of how are you feeling today? Well, I'm a little bit, you know, stressed out about whatever. Um, oh, you're stressed. Really? Hmm. Well, you know, I mean, you can't be honest with them. I, I just, we avoid doctors altogether. If, if, there's some issues my wife is having or whatever else. She'll look it up online, natural remedies for, or I'm having pain someplace or whatever else. Um, get some books on natural healing, natural health, um, nutritional therapy type of stuff. You know, be your own doctor is what I would say. David Wood earned a doctorate in philosophy from Fordham University. Yeah. Take heed lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Yeah. And Fordham University, the same place that Trump went to, it's a Jesuit school. Um, yeah. I just got a reply here. Trump is a Jesuit controlled devil. Um, yeah, his his uh, uh, a part, his building there in New York City is uh, the the decor is based on the Palace of Versailles or something like that. King Louis the Fourteenth, or I probably have that wrong, but the king that he patterned his his you know penthouse there in New York after uh, was a a he hated. Bible believing Christians and, and put them to death. So she kind of tell you, you know, this is the hero of Donald Trump, a king in France that hated Christians and persecuted Christians. You know, I'm going to vote for Trump. He's a good man. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the World Bank 2020 document report? It states the virus is expected to last till 2025. No, I haven't seen that. We can fight against that, though. Uh, what do you, Ryan? What do you think about having a land patent on your property rather than just a warranty deed? Um, I haven't looked into some of that stuff. I know that there are some things out there. Probably should look into it. Um, I just kind of rely on the Lord to take care of me in, in those areas. Um, so that's how I would answer that. Yeah, Trump liked Norman Vincent Peale. Yeah, he did. The power of positive thinking. Norman Vincent Peale, the Freemason that he was. That guy was a fruit loop. But um, so, well, I should probably, I guess, bring this to an end. It's two hours. So, um, 
Don't forget that I'm a, uh, what the guy call me? The money grubber. Ryan Denninger, the money grubber. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've been wanting to just get on and just have a little fellowship with the brethren. I always like these times together. Um, so I just thought it'd be funny. I, you know, uh, people send me links to stuff and I see links to things and I think, what is this? And so, you know, just to, just to explain, you know, what the deal is with the GoFundMe thing. Um, and you know, Hey, to everybody out there, all these people, um, please issue a public apology for lying about me. Um, I'm not sitting on $32,000. So that's pretty much ridiculous. Um, so, okay, we will shut this down and, um, what are we doing? We still have a few things that we need to get done. Um, some here in Maine, when, when winter's coming and it was actually snowing this morning, we're supposed to get about two inches of snow tonight. Um, when it starts to, when it's getting ready to snow, you have to make sure first and foremost, anything on the ground around your property that you don't want to be there. Uh, you have to get it up and get it put away. And so I've been trying to tell my son, you know, anything outside that you're, that you're playing with, we need to get it off the ground because when the snow starts, we aren't going to be seeing the ground again for another six months. So, you know, you, you kind of need to get stuff away. So that's, that's what we have to do. Um, there's a uh, old logging trails on our property, on our land, uh, that we need to, um, clear out some of that stuff because we're going to be doing some logging this winter. Um, hopefully Lord willing, uh, working on our future cabin house, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to be building it Lord willing completely with our own milled lumber. I have a chainsaw mill. Um, so, uh, ran it many years ago and then, and then I updated the actual mill itself, but it's the same power head. The old Husky 394 XP Husqvarna Swedish chainsaw. Um, so, going to be trying to use that this winter, um, but going to be going to be doing some logging on our land, um, just getting things out in the snow. We have a snowmobile that we bought, and for that purpose, we did all of our firewood last winter. Um, so, but. Uh, So, um, a lot of different things to, uh, to get done and whatever else. So, um, we'll be in and out over time here. Um, probably still do some live stream type of things once in a while. And, uh, I have a, I have a big plan that I'm going to keep secret for right now. Um, something that I have actually started and it's going to take a while to get it finished. So. I'll, I'll keep that secret. It's not another ministry office. Just to kind of put that out there. <laughs> um, we've done whatever we could to, to make the ministry work better and, and whatever. So over the years, but thankfully we now have this place here, which we still don't have a heat situation here figured out. Um, so, uh, Yeah, I'll put your comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, hi, Brother Ryan. A couple of books about the translators. Thoughts about the KJV are translating for King James and the coming of the King James Gospels. Both are by Ward Allen. I don't think I have those. That's interesting. But thank you very much for your comment. To answer the question earlier, thank you very much for that. Um, so, but... Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. That's about all I'm going to say for now. But um, we have some work to do here at this place as well. Uh, I have another shelving thing over here. There's going to be right behind me, my head, back here on this wall, there's going to be a new shelving bookshelf uh, that I'm putting up 
back there that I can fit more of my books in here. So I don't have everything up yet. Um, there's still some books that I'm going to need to have a place to put. And so we're going to be working on that. I have um, uh, some old pellet stoves that we had at Bridgewater and uh, and they're going to be, I'm going to be selling those. They're in pretty rough shape using them for all the years we did. Um, one is okay, but, and then we're going to be trying to put in a wood stove in the one room over that way to give us better heat here. And uh, I had our roof fixed a little while ago, sun porch roof. So that's good. That was a big prayer request. Got that done. So we're, we're doing pretty good. Um, I don't know what's going to happen if they lock the country down again. Right now, there isn't anything going on in Maine. Um, so, uh, but just seeing the devastation that this whole coronavirus thing has caused to the economy around here, uh, it's incredible. I'll just, I'll give a couple little things here just to kind of further to say about what's going on in this country. Um, I know people have been saying that there is going to come a famine, a shortage of food and everything else. And there could be eventually, but I, what I'm seeing is there's plenty of food on the shelves and people aren't buying it. Um, I'm seeing that and uh, I was at the grocery store early this morning and that's literally, literally what was going on there. Um, so, but just seeing houses abandoned up here all the time. Um, literally there's i mean they have they have houses for sale that have not sold in years the average time it takes to sell a house here in northern maine by the way is 10 years back when the economy was decent uh so now it's going to, going to be even worse i mean there's literally i see houses that are for sale and the front door is hanging open every day you drive by um people are just walking away from their homes and uh we are an extremely poor area here in Northern Maine. Um, I think the average income is twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for most people up here. A lot of people on welfare, uh, very poor up here. Um, so I think, you know, I think a lot of, you know, the reason that the Lord brought us here, because I've wondered about that over the years, because we were just. You know, we were open to, okay, if the Lord says no to buying property here, then that's fine. We'll just go someplace else. And I really feel the Lord brought us here to Northern Maine. And um, I think about the Sheffy movie, or not the movie, the, the Sheffy book. And um, and he talked about the Civil War brought in so many chances to witness to people. And, you know, he was down in you know that area where the war was actually going on um, back there in the 19th century. And there were... Um, you know, there were so many uh, people that were dying in the Civil War that it opened up new chances to witness. And I think that that's literally what's going to happen in the future. Um, I do think that America is going to go into Civil War, maybe not organized like it was in the first Civil War, where you actually have military, you know, um, command and, and actual marching of troops. I don't know if it'll get to that level at least not at first, but there's going to be a lot of killing coming up in the future and a lot of suffering. And it's going to open up a lot of chances for all of us to witness to people. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So just saw this brother Jacob. One of the trolls is live streaming your live stream. <laughs> which, which one, which one is it? What's your channel? Oh, Craig and oh, brother. So, okay. This this young guy, Craig and guy, he, a poor guy. He's got some real mental issues. I, you know, comfort the comfort the feeble minded. Well, I tried to I tried to be nice to the guy, but uh, poor kid. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's going going to be it. 
uh, just a little bit of humor this morning here and, and just a good time to fellowship. I, I appreciate all of you out there and, and um, even the foes of the ministry because, you know, you make these weird videos against me. It just makes the ministry look that much better. So, <laughs> but uh, everybody out there, just be encouraged to fight. Um, remember, the Lord is on our side. Uh, all the Jesuits, all the Papist knights, all the all these people that think that they have it figured out, their time is short. Their time is so short, and they're going they're going to die and go to hell. They're trading, you know, they're selling their soul to the devil, trading it for money and power. Foolish, it's foolish. You know, nothing is worth going to hell. So, all right, that's going to be it. Um, yeah, so we will see everybody in future videos and uh, please do keep us in your prayers and um, we'll pray for all of you as well. So we'll see you in the next video.